All right, on today's episode, we're going to talk about Blue Origin, the punching bag of the space community and the passion project of real life Lex Luthor and the first company to launch a giant dick into space. But like it or not, Blue Origin are here and they are here to stay. This company has the resources and the potential to be a major player in the space flight industry, but they also have a lot to prove. So in this video, we're talking all things Blue Origin from their inception to their future. And we're going to try not to be too mean to Jeff Bezos in the process and try to avoid making too many comparisons to you know who. This is the space race. To really get to the bottom of this origin story, we've got to first understand a bit about our boy Jeff. You might be surprised to hear that life wasn't always smooth sailing for him. Jeff was born in 1964 in Albuquerque to a teenage mother named Jacqueline, who was divorced from his biological father, Ted Jorgensen, less than a year into their marriage. Yes, his birth name was Jeff Jorgensen. That would not have worked out so well. The name Bezos came from Jacqueline's second husband, Mike, a Cuban immigrant to America. Jeff Bezos has always been into space, and as a kid, he was a big fan of Star Trek and science fiction books. In his valedictorian speech to his graduating high school class of 1982, Bezos took the opportunity to lay out his ideas for migrating the Earth's population to space. The Miami Herald actually covered Jeff's master plan in a roundup of high school graduation speeches from that year. The Herald wrote, Bezos wants to build space hotels, amusement parks, yachts, and colonies for two or three million people orbiting around the Earth. The whole idea is to preserve Earth, he said. According to the newspaper, which notes of Bezos that his final objective is to get all people off the Earth and see it turned into a huge national park. Then Jeff followed his aerospace dreams to Princeton University, where he studied electrical engineering and computer science. Of course, Bezos did not go on to become a rocket scientist. He began his career at a Wall Street investment firm where he made enough money to eventually break off and start his e-commerce website that you may be familiar with. But Jeff's dream for life among the stars stayed with him throughout his meteoric rise to success in the 1990s. And as soon as he was wealthy enough to do it, Bezos founded his very own aerospace company, Blue Origin, in the year 2000. Blue Origin was founded on the vision of enabling millions of people to live and work in space for the benefit of Earth. Basically the same thing Jeff was talking about in high school. If people are ruining Earth, then let's just move them off the planet and put them in space. Problem solved, right? Anyway. Blue Origin's game plan in the short term is to focus on reusable rocket systems. That's one idea that Bezos absolutely has gotten right. For spaceflight to be truly practical, it will require launch vehicles that are operationally reusable. That means rockets that can take off and land consistently and safely and then fly again in short order with minimal refurbishing in between. Did you know that Blue Origin was the first company to successfully land a rocket booster following a launch into space? Most people would think that title goes to SpaceX, but Blue Origin did beat them with a rocket that goes to space and back again. Suborbital space, that is. Of course, SpaceX do hold the mantle for the first and only orbital rocket booster to successfully fly and land, which is a much more significant accomplishment and has rightly gained them much more recognition because of it. Blue Origin had been quietly working away on their new Shepard rocket system for the better part of a decade. Then in 2016, Jeff invited reporters out to the company headquarters in Kent, Washington to show the world what Blue Origin had been working on, a suborbital rocket built for the purpose of space tourism. Blue Origin currently has one functioning vehicle in their lineup, the New Shepard. We've all seen this by now. It's the one that flew Jeff and his crew into space and looks like a giant metal... I'm not going to say it. The rocket is named in honor of Alan Shepard, who was not the first person to reach space, but he was the first American to fly in space. Shepard achieved his feat in 1961 as part of NASA's Mercury project. Alan Shepard's first flight reached a maximum altitude of 187.5 kilometers, while the new Shepard capsule has reached a maximum height of 107 kilometers above the Earth's surface with crew on board. But back to the actual rocket. New Shepard is designed to be as safe and reusable as possible. The company completed 15 successful launch and landing test flights before attempting their first crewed flight. 
This included three successful escape tests to show that the crew capsule could escape the booster at any point during the flight. All right. Now, obviously, there's been a lot made about the fact that this rocket looks overwhelmingly phallic, and believe it or not, there's actually a functional reason for this design. The way this system works is pretty simple. The vehicle launches straight up with the booster's BE-3 rocket engine powering it to a maximum speed of around 3,500 kilometers per hour. When they reach an altitude of about 76 kilometers high, the capsule separates from the booster and coasts up to its maximum height. This is the point where the crew will start to experience weightlessness. The booster and capsule both reach their apogee and then start to fall back down. The booster is designed to be as narrow as possible so that it comes back down fast and accurate like a dart. It uses a combination of fins and air brakes to control descent and then refires the engine close to the surface for a very slow and controlled landing on solid ground. Meanwhile, the capsule is designed to be as wide as possible so that it creates the most drag and comes down much more slowly. The capsule uses three parachutes to come down for a very slow final descent. The moment before landing, the capsule fires retro thrusters to create a cushion of air underneath, and that's why it kicks up a cloud of dust underneath. Even the seats have shock absorbers built in for the most comfortable landing possible. The new Shepard capsule is designed in a way that even if two out of three parachutes failed to deploy, it could still pull off a landing safe enough to avoid killing the people inside. The new Shepard's BE-3 engine is what's called a Hydrolox. It burns a combination of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Blue Origin would claim that liquid hydrogen is the ideal rocket fuel. Others would argue that liquid methane is superior. We'll get into that in a future video. But what's really neat is the main byproduct of combustion in this engine is simple water vapor. Now you should be aware that water vapor isn't as harmless as it sounds. It's actually a greenhouse gas that New Shepard is pumping into the atmosphere. Water vapor is the single largest contributor to the Earth's greenhouse effect. The upside of water vapor as opposed to other greenhouse gases is that it lingers in the atmosphere for a much shorter period of time. By comparison, again, there's a long story here that we won't get into. By the way, please don't forget to take a moment and give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. I know it can be uncomfortable, you feel seen, but that one little click can be very powerful and I truly thank you for it. Blue Origin are basically looking at the new Shepard as a practice run for the main event, the new Glenn. This rocket is also named for a famous American astronaut, John Glenn, who was the first American to reach orbit. In 1962, Glenn rode a Project Mercury spacecraft into orbit around the Earth, where he completed three full circles before coming back down again. Blue Origin are hopeful that the new Glenn will be their first orbital space rocket ship, opening the company up to doing real work in space like delivering satellites, visiting the International Space Station, and even flying to the moon. Now, it's important to keep in mind that New Glenn does not actually exist yet. So this is all hypothetical from now on, and Blue Origin probably won't complete their first flight of the rocket until late in the year 2022. The design for the New Glenn indicates that it will be a very big rocket and considerably less penis-shaped than the Shepard. At 95 meters tall, the Glenn will tower over its existing competition, the SpaceX Falcon 9, which comes in at 70 meters. And this is where we can actually start drawing some comparisons between these two companies. Trying to compare the New Shepard to a SpaceX vehicle is like comparing a golf cart to a pickup truck. It just doesn't compute. The extra size of New Glenn would allow it to carry a much larger volume of cargo than the Falcon 9. The Glenn is designed with humongous 7 meter long fairings to accommodate its payload. Fairings are those clamshell sections that fall away when the second stage reaches orbit and reveal the payload inside. New Glenn is also supposed to be capable of carrying a maximum cargo weight of 45 metric tons, which is significantly more than the Falcon 9's one rep max of about 25 tons. Don't worry, I know what you're thinking. We'll get there in a second. Another advertised feature of the new Glenn will be the capability to land the first stage of the rocket on a floating platform at sea. But unlike SpaceX, who land their Falcon 9 on a stationary drone ship, Blue Origin intends to land the Glenn on a moving ship, a cargo freighter that is converted to a mobile landing pad. 
This is an advantage for Blue Origin, as a large moving ship will be much more stable in the ocean waves than a small stationary barge. If this idea works, it will make Blue Origin missions less susceptible to delays by weather conditions, as they can still land in stormy seas. Alright, now let's address the elephant in the room here. Starship. Of course, New Glenn will outperform the Falcon 9, because the Falcon booster has been in service for a decade at this point. It's old. The Glenn is, well, new. It's in the name. But when you compare Blue Origin's future plans for New Glenn against the plans that SpaceX have for Starship, the Glenn gets absolutely slaughtered. But yet again, that's a subject for a whole other video. So subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss it. So Jeff Bezos has been showing off the Blue Origin Lunar Lander prototype for quite a while now. He debuted the Blue Moon vehicle at a presentation in 2019, so we know that the company has been gunning for the moon, and that's probably why they were so upset when NASA didn't pick them to build the human landing system vehicle for the upcoming Artemis crew mission to the moon. SpaceX won instead. It's a whole big controversy that we're also not getting into today, but we can get back into it in a future video when the dust settles. If you guys would like, let us know in the comment section below. Okay, so now that we've given you a bit of an overview of Blue Origin, where they started, and where they're at now, let's get back to Jeff Bezos and his master plan for getting people off of the Earth and moving us into space colonies. This is essentially the long game for Blue Origin and what I would call the equivalent to Elon Musk's Mars colony plan. Bezos is obsessed with the idea of O'Neill colonies. These are humongous rotating cylinders in space that would function as self-contained cities. The idea comes from Princeton physicist Gerard O'Neill, who in 1976 suggested that other planets might not be the best place for humans to live away from Earth. He thought that instead we would be more comfortable in purpose-built colonies that simply float in space. They rotate constantly to generate artificial gravity through centrifugal force. Jeff pictures these space colonies as perfect utopias for humankind. We'd never again have to worry about temperature or weather or pollution. We could build any kind of architecture we like, replicate historical cities on Earth, even create nature reserves, parks, and infinite recreation facilities in space. Jeff's big idea for saving the Earth from pollution is to simply just move all manufacturing and industry into space. Resource extraction can also be moved off of the Earth. If we can branch out into the solar system, then we can also stop digging up and ruining our only home. We can instead mine resources from the infinite supply of lifeless rocks floating around the sun. Now, Bezos freely admits that he has no idea how to build these O'Neill colonies and that they won't even be possible anytime soon certainly not in his lifetime. But he is really trying to make a point of laying the groundwork right now for these kinds of fantastic things to be possible in the future. One of the only genuinely good points that I've ever heard Jeff Bezos make is when he talks about the problem of infrastructure in space. There is none. There is no foundation established for new ideas to be built on, and that's a big problem that he wants to begin to solve with Blue Origin. They don't have to be the best aerospace company, they just have to be good enough to do their part in normalizing spaceflight and making it easier to get there. Kind of like building the roads into space, laying the groundwork for the future. Bezos uses Amazon as a really good analogy for this. He never had to worry about how the packages would get to the customers because USPS and FedEx already existed. He never had to worry about how people would access his business because computers and the internet already existed. Bezos used those existing services and built something new on top of them. If he'd had to make everything from scratch, then Amazon never would have been possible. All right, so I think we got through a whole video without being mean to Jeff Bezos. It wasn't easy and a lot of things were left unsaid, but I do think it's important to at least understand what Jeff and his company are all about. We can't just ignore him and hope that he goes away. He's too rich for that. And besides, the devil that you know is better than the devil that you don't. Honest thoughts on Blue Origin in the comment section below. Let's hear what you guys think. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. We're trying to grow this new channel as fast as we can, and every little bit of support you give us means the world. Subscribe for weekly content just like this. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you. Watching, and we'll see you.